Hello everyone and welcome back to another Feature Friday. Today we are playing Among Ripples. As you guys just saw, the title just sort of faded away real quick here. So Among Ripples is a nice little indie game uh, that you can get um, on itch.io, uh, either with a small donation to the creators or um, for free. So, and Among Ripples was created by Eat, Create, Sleep. Uh, and so let's just check it out. They have a little Kickstarter for a sequel, uh, which I will play soon enough. Uh, so this is the first part of our Feature Friday video. I'm actually going to be featuring two games today, and both of these games will be talking about, um, I guess, ecos ecosystem simulations. So they're nice little games, uh, and sometimes you can try to figure out how to balance your own ecosystem here. Uh, and so here we just have a little pond, and so our idea is to try and maintain a stable pond ecosystem. So. First things first, um, these little zones down here, so this log here, this little spawning bed here, and this little area here will spawn different animals. So if I click over here, you can see I've spawned a lot of little fish. And if I click over here, I can spawn some shellfish down here. Here I can spawn some medium-sized fish. Here I can spawn pike, uh, which is like um, almost an apex predator. And up here I can spawn an otter, which is the apex pre predator of, well, this little pond here. Uh, and so I think one of the challenges of this little game is to try and figure out how to balance your ecosystem so that it is uh, perfectly self-maintaining. Uh, so that's probably one of the challenges. And I think this is a great, this is a great game to play for fun. I think it's also a use, very useful like uh, teaching tool for school because I'm just thinking about like how I could use it if I was a, for example, if I was a teacher um, having to teach the subject. Uh, this I think this would be a really interesting game for my students to play. And so that being said, let's just get a little bit of this gameplay in here, and I'm going to see how I can balance this out. So as you can see here, the lobsters are bottom feeders, and they're cleaning this stuff up. Uh, and since they're going uncontested, they are quite big. Uh, and so they will also clear up all these dead cor corpses um, in time. I think the mollusks, I don't actually remember what the mollusks do besides, I think, help filter the water. Uh, and here we go. Let's just put down some more of these. So if you guys like what you see here so far, you can definitely head on over to itch.io. Probably pop a link in the description down below to get it. Um, and as always, Feature Fridays, I feature a lot of different games. Sometimes they're indie games. Sometimes they're games that are free on the Epic Game Store that uh, are not too well known. Uh, for example, last week I did Death Coming, which was a nice little indie game as well. Uh, so you can go check that out. I'll pop a little playlist to the entire Feature Friday section uh, if you guys want to see it. So, there's a little layer of something filling up here, and I don't suppose that's good. I think the mollusks here might be dying down. Oh, no, okay, so I think all I needed was some mollusks, so I think the mollusks help maintain the cleanliness of our, of our sort of, um, the floor of our pond. Now, however, as you guys can see here, I have put in too many of these middle-sized fish, and the middle-sized fish have completely eaten have eaten completely all the small fish. So I'm gonna introduce a pike into this environment, and I'm gonna see if that would change anything. So as you can see here, the fish have naturally gotten some clusters here. Now I think one pike will probably be able to take care of all three of these fish, and that might be an issue because the pike might start having to eat other things. Um, or I think I think guess these aren't lobsters, I guess they're crayfish if it is a freshwater ecosystem. Uh, it's, got, it's got a very nice, calming, soothing soundtrack as well. Perfect for a casual night in. Um, but I guess every night is a night in now at this point um, with the coronavirus here. But there we go. Very relaxing. Some of these fish are quite big. So there we go. The pike just ate that really large fish here. I think the crayfish are actually also eating the mollusks as well. Um, because they are bottom feeders, so they're just gonna go for everything. So I think, I think I have too many crayfish down here. Maybe if I have one crayfish, because uh, the crayfish will help clean up the carcasses up top. Um, let's see, I'm just not gonna touch this ecosystem and I'll see where it goes. I have a feeling that the pike is gonna eat everything. Um, there we go. But I think if the pike eats all of the medium sized fish, there'll be no more medium sized fish and then eventually, I don't know if it'll go for the small fish, but it might, they might just starve. That'll be very interesting to see. So we have a lot of mollusks here now. And the pike has grown quite massive, actually. Look at the size of that. And the pike has done a great job of controlling the medium-sized fish population, however, 
it doesn't look like the medium-sized fish will be able to repopulate because there's only one of them. The crayfish have gotten extremely large and there goes our last medium-sized fish here. Um, yeah, the crayfish are absolutely enormous and they're actually killing off all of the mollusks here. Now the question is, is the pike going to attack the crayfish? I don't think so. I don't know if the animals will die if there is no food for them, but I think that's a possibility. And I think here in the center, this is a bit of phytoplankton, so we're just plankton in general, so I think maybe the small fish here will eat it. Ah, so the pike is actually shrinking down in size, and it is going for the small fish now. Ah, interesting. But this is a great, I guess, a demonstration of what happens um, when a certain prey species is eliminated from an ecosystem chain. Um, the predator species has to adapt. And as you can see here, the crayfish have actually eaten everything that's on the ocean floor. There are no more mollusks here. Uh, but I think they're still somehow thriving. Uh, there's more crayfish that have spawned. Uh, the pike is starting to get a little larger once again. Ah, the small crayfish, the big crayfish actually ate the smaller crayfish. And so they're preying upon each other now. So the pike ate the last small fish here. I don't think the pike will go for the crayfish though, unless it's extremely desperate. Let's see. As you can see here, the ecosystem is slowly cooling down. And all we have left is the pike. An apex predator that has eaten absolutely everything and is now going to starve, I think. And it's gonna probably die as well. And all we have left are the bottom feeders. Uh, as you can see, the bottom feeders are quite resilient though. Uh, even in our freshwater ecosystems, I believe, at least the ones that are closer in, closer to the cities in Ontario, we still have the chances of finding crayfish, but definitely fish are not likely to exist. Um, I mean, factor in all the pollution and everything else that happens, um, big fish will definitely stand no chance here. Uh, there we go. It looks like there's still one crayfish going around, and I wonder... Hmm. The pike has shrunk into a very, very small size, and I think it might kick the bucket here. Unless it can't die of starvation. That'll be interesting. I don't, know how, I don't know how it's coded. Oh, there we go. It's gone. And so this one crayfish here is probably going to be able to clean up on that pike carcass that has floated to the ocean floor, or the, the floor of this little pond slash lake. And it's going to clean it up, and the crayfish has gone bigger. But I think this crayfish... Oh my god, it's massive because it ate the entire pike by itself, I think. However, I think this crayfish by itself, probably it's going to be the last survivor of this ecosystem. I don't think anything else is gonna be able to survive here. Hmm. Well, that was a very interesting experiment, I guess. Um, maybe we can try and see if we can wipe this ecosystem clean again. I don't want to spawn anything else in, um, but I want to see what the perfect formula is. Because I know I can introduce an otter, and the otter will eat just about anything in the ecosystem, but it prefers um, the shellfish that are on the ocean floor, or the floor of the pond. So maybe I need to establish a strong shellfish population first, and a strong population of small fish, and then considering introducing other other creatures. So as you can see here, the water is slowly starting to get a little foul here, and that's because we don't have our natural filtration systems, uh, which are the shellfish. I don't want to introduce anything yet, so maybe I'll just skip forward to the part where the crayfish dies, um, and I'll show you guys. 
Oh! I guess we don't need to skip. It just died right now. So, now then, we have a little pollution here. So let's try and reset this by introducing some mollusks into this ecosystem. And they should be able to purify it soon enough. Look at that. There we go. So we're just going to keep the mollusk here and allow it to reproduce first. They're sort of like the the vanguard, I guess, of um, establishing an ecosystem, it seems. Um, however, the plankton population here has shrunk a little bit. I think these, I think this is plankton, to be honest. Uh, but it is expanding out again. Uh, I don't know if the moss are going to start replicating themselves, but shellfish are... It's kind of like moss um, when you're just trying to turn stone into dirt. Moss is usually the first thing that gets onto the dirt, and then afterwards uh, it slowly breaks it apart into smaller... I mean, breaks gets onto the stone and breaks the stone apart into smaller pieces of stone, which then crumble into gravel and then from gravel gets reduced to dirt and then so on until it becomes like habitable uh, for plants. But it looks like the mollusks here are, they're just going to be growing older. It doesn't look like they're going to be reproducing. Um, okay, so this seems quite stable now. So what if we introduce some fish? What if we introduce some fish? Because the fish will produce some more waste, and the mollusk will not be eating the plankton, but instead uh, will be eating the fish waste. However, they're all they're both feeding off of the plankton here, and the plankton is actually diminishing significantly. Um, as you can see, the yellow here has gotten so small that it's barely there now. Uh, and there we go, we have a layer of detritus rising up. Can I spawn in some more? So the mollusks here have gotten a lot smaller now, uh, due to the fact that there's less for them to eat. Uh, in terms of, I guess they do. I guess they are eating the plankton. Hmm, that's very interesting. Uh, okay, so the plankton is back again, and they just cleaned up the detritus and they're growing again. The plankton has recovered, and immediately the small fish are going right for it. Uh, and so, oh look at that. So we are currently gated. The limiting factor by how many of the small fish we can have is the amount of plankton, uh, the plankton respawn rate, or the amount of plankton that is there. Because if we eat up all of it, because it looks like the, the mollusks here are just eating up the plankton. Um, but I've if I introduce a crayfish, the crayfish seems to just run rampant and eat, like just kill all of the mollusks. Um, so it seems like crayfish are not the option to establish a self-sustaining ecosystem on the bottom four, at least for the first layer. Mm, I wonder if I can introduce more fish and what that would mean for the equation. So I'm going to introduce more fish here. I want to see how that changes the equation. So we've just doubled the fish population. And let's see what happens. Mm. Okay, so plankton is running a little low. I don't think the plankton can ever disappear. Um, I don't know how accurate that is to real life, to be honest, but, um, or is it algae? It might just be algae here. Uh, I don't quite remember what they call it in this game. So I played the, I played the tutorial a while back, and, um, I, I low-key forgot, uh, what exactly the things are called, but uh, don't worry about it. Um, I'll probably, like, put a more detailed description in the description box of this video. Now, let's see. So it seems like we've established a little bit of, like, a of an ebb and flow. Uh, it's just a nice little back and forth that's going on here. So some of the small fish are, are dying, so doubling the population wasn't good, but I think we've established a stable population. Oh, look at that! The mollusks are about to reproduce. These things are little sort of, I guess they're eggs, um, and they're gonna reproduce. And the mollusk, If the mollusk population doubles, that might be a good time to introduce a crayfish, or two. Or maybe just one crayfish. Because um, the mollusk is the source of food for the crayfish. And I guess this, this is a stable um, number of small fish that we have. And we might have too many mollusks because they are struggling to survive. Because, mm, yeah, look, they're shrinking again. Yeah, because they're running out of food. Only some of them are getting enough food. Eh, but as soon as the detritus level rises again, uh, they recover once more. So as you guys can see here, like planning out an ecosystem is quite tough, um, and we should be preserving Earth's ecosystems 
uh, because honestly, this is a very simplified version of what an ecosystem could be. So we have a lot of mollusks here. So let's introduce a crayfish, right? Um, there's a this is like a very simplified version. There's just like three or four sort of key pieces here, but like in a real ecosystem, there's at least a few hundred, right? Uh, so some of the mollusks here didn't make it past. Um, yep, they're just they're starving now. They're dying off, uh, and so this crayfish is probably just going to hasten their death because, um, well, there we go. I think the crayfish just rampantly devours the mollusks. Um, yeah, they're just going for it. Oh no, those those ones just starved to death. So there's still five mollusks here. Um, so five was clearly a little too much to start off with. But the small fish are able to survive um, off of the plankton. Uh, and endlessly, I guess. And look, there's a, there's a clutch of eggs right there. The mollusks here are growing a little bigger. I assume the crayfish is going to eliminate some of them, but I wonder if the crayfish is going to eliminate all of them. Because um, I don't know what the what actually preys on the crayfish. I think it might be this medium-sized fish, unless there's another animal that I can introduce into this environment that I completely forgot about. Because um, I know the otter. The otter is the supreme apex predator, and it will it will devour any fish, including the pike, uh, in this ecosystem. So, let's see. I think one crayfish right now seems to be good, but it's eliminating, if it eliminates too many of the mollusks, that's gonna be bad. And that's, see, this is this is an interesting thing, right? Um, this is what happens when, it, when you introduce an invasive species into your environment, right? Because currently, I don't, there's no predator for this crayfish, and so it's just running rampant, and it's gonna literally tear this ecosystem apart. Um, you guys watch here and it's just going to kill off these mollusks here like it's already killed off most of the mollusks uh, I think the mollusks will be able to survive and continue purifying the system but the water is gonna get absolutely filthy without purification um, and I think the, and I think the crayfish can just endlessly survive yeah there's a lot of small fish that are dying off right now uh, okay but there's still some of them surviving so the small fish population is still decently stable enough, but as you can see here, the detritus is building up. Um, and let's see. Oh my god, a lot of small fish hatch from that cluster. No wonder! Okay. And so they all run out of food, and then they're like, and then they die. Maybe that's what's happening. Uh, I wonder if the crayfish will just... I know, the crayfish will starve, but... I think it'll be able to pick up on the corpses of the fish and I'll be able to survive like that. Let's see if it does that. Uh, oh, the answer looks like no, unless it's going back to spawn more crayfish, because that's its sort of spawn point. Uh, no, I think it is going to clean up some of the corpses here. I think it's just interesting to watch, so maybe maybe, maybe we, won't, we won't do two games. I know I said I, we were going to do two games, but... <laughs> we're actually just going to do this one game, I guess. Because um, this actually has so much more potential um, to it than I expected it to have at first glance. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I wonder how I can establish a safe population of mollusks. Because the mollusks are running rampant, so maybe I just got to let them sort of run rampant and then die off because of the lack of resources and then it'll establish like a stable number i mean this is like sort of what happens with natural selection right um and not introduce a crayfish which currently has no competitors uh, or no no not competitors but no predators in its environment mm, let's see okay so the crayfish i think has died i don't see it anymore and the small fish are still thriving so i think the small fish can thrive endlessly here uh, and that makes for a great base of our ecosystem. Uh, let's just introduce some more small fish here. I'm going to introduce more. Uh, I'm going to spawn some more. And we're going to see how this goes. As you can see here, the layer of detritus is starting to rot, is starting to build up uh, without the help of the moss. So maybe instead of having so many moss, so maybe all I need is just like two or three. Um, they will naturally reproduce, um, but they won't sort of consume all of the detritus it's at such a rapid pace. Uh, let's see. Because as the polluted water rises up, 
um, it is eventually going to kill off all of these fish. Uh, let's see. So they're just coming in here to eat the plankton. Or the algae. Something, some sort of microorganism that they're eating. Uh, yeah, this looks like a very stable population of small fish. Uh, but the only, only worrying issue is that there is a buildup of <laughs> detritus. No, no other way to say it. Interesting, okay. So, I want to see if I can try and introduce some medium-sized fish. In my sum, I want to introduce one. And I want to see what happens. So it's just one of these bad boys in here right now. And it looks like it's going to go for one of those small fish. Uh, can't make up its mind, though. And I think I'm going to introduce some, like, one or two mollusks. I'm going to, I'm going to introduce one mollusk here. Uh, but this medium-sized fish is going uncontested right now. And it's probably going to cull a lot of the small fish population, I think. Um, so the one mollusk here has actually done amazing things for cleaning up the bottom of the pond floor. Which is actually pretty, which is pretty good, so I didn't need to spawn in five. Only one was good enough. Uh, and it's constantly growing. Every time it has that little blue animation, I think it's growing. Uh, and so this medium-sized fish here has eaten some small fish, but I think the small fish population is large enough and stable enough that it can sustain some predation. Uh, the only issue is if I introduce more of them, I might not have enough small fish. Uh, let's see. I think that's about as big as the medium fish, medium sized fish gets. So the mollusk has shrunk again, and it's growing up again. So we actually don't need too many mollusks at all. It's just a handful, and that's all we need. Let's see, and I think there is a there's a lot of small fish, and I think ah look, the plankton seem to be spawning a lot in a lot larger number now that the water has also cleaned up a lot. Um, which is good news, because that'll allow our fish population to sustain itself um, much, much better. Look at that! I think we have a winner, guys. This ecosystem is looking mighty fine. Uh, but I do want to get to the otter, though, so I do want to have a... I don't know if I can build an ecosystem that can sustain an otter, though. Because the otters will attack the shellfish, which will actually ruin um, the cleanliness of this water. Which I guess is a, is a great demonstration of what happens when you introduce an apex predator like the otter into an environment like this one. Because the otter is completely uncontested, and so if there's more and more otters, it's just going to strip the area clear of resources, and it eventually it'll have to move somewhere else. Because uh, shellfish don't reproduce too fast, and they are still reliant on food resources there. And the otters will not just eat the shellfish, they'll start eating everything else inside the waters. Uh, they'll eat the small fish, the medium fish, they'll even eat the pike. Um, I don't know if they eat the crayfish though, but all I know is that they're gonna just completely destroy this ecosystem. And I think right now this ecosystem is in a really good state. Um, there are enough small fish that they are reproducing. Uh, and I think I, should, I can probably introduce... Oh no, because if I introduce another medium-sized fish, I think that will cause the medium-sized fish to start reproducing, and once the medium-sized fish start reproducing, the small fish population is going to get completely obliterated. Um, that's going to be bad news, because once the small fish population gets obliterated, well, <laughs> the big fish dies, and we, we might still have the otters remaining. Oh, some of the small fish are actually dying of old age right now. That is very interesting. And that one shellfish that we have is doing great. I think this is this is like the perfect balance here. Uh, provided the shellfish doesn't die of old age. That being said, though, right? Like, if we need, if we want an actual sustainable ecosystem, we will need to have at least um, a re like a mating pair inside this ecosystem. And a lot of the small fish are dying. Um, and I think it's probably they're dying because of. Hmm, that's interesting. 
they're probably dying of starvation because they re they've reproduced way too fast. Which tells me that we could probably have room for another medium-sized fish right now. And we actually lost both of our mollusks here. Uh, has the has the bottom of the pond gotten too toxic? With all the dead bodies that are accumulating, I don't think I like the. As you can see, like the the plankton itself is also not reproducing properly anymore because of the detritus, and all the small fish are actually starving. Uh, and actually, I think I think it's the detritus that's killing everything. Uh, so let's introduce a crayfish here. I want I don't know if the crayfish can help us clean up here. Uh, maybe it can. Maybe it's the, I I probably need the crayfish to help clean up the dead bodies here. Uh, okay, so there we go. The plankton has reproduced. Uh, and the crayfish here, yeah, it's cleaned up the dead bodies all right. It's going through it, so it's going. There we go. I just ate that one. And because the crayfish are scavengers, so they will clean up all of this stuff. The only issue is that they also eat the mollusks, and the mollusks help keep it clean, or the shellfish. Um, this is very interesting, because what I thought was keeping the water clean, I think it might just be too dirty for the mollusks now. Like, there's just too much detritus. Um, and even if I, if I put in some mollusks, I think they'll still die because the water's just way too dirty. Yeah, they're just gonna die. Like, they're not able to filter up. Filter it out. So I think this ecosystem has actually started is actually doomed. Um, it's on a death spiral. Yeah, it's on a death spiral. The mollusks have died off, and so there was too many small fish here, and not enough um, balance in terms in terms of like the decomposers um, that help break down dead organic material because now it's just sort of stacking up dead or waste products. Um, and soon enough, the small fish won't be able to re reach the plankton, I think, without going into the unclean water. Um, and they can't even spawn unless they go into the unclean water. Huh. Well, this is certainly a very interesting game. If you guys want to see me play more of it, uh, be sure to let me know in the description down below. I'm actually kind of curious as to how I can build a nice self-sustaining ecosystem. The Medium-sized fish here is actually a little purple, so that tells me it might be like old. It's getting old, like old, or it might be sick. Uh, but anyways, this this has been Among Ripples. Uh, if you like what you see here, you can go and grab it at itch.io, uh, and it's a great game just to, I guess, just to appreciate the complexity of nature, um, because this is such a simple game in terms of like compared to like what reality is like um, that it just makes us. I don't know, it, it, sh it should be a humbling experience, I think, um, because I'm certainly in awe at how difficult it is to balance an ecosystem, um, and how this sort of death spiral, once triggered, doesn't seem to be able to be reversible by any other means besides, well, not natural means at least, like all these things are going to die and everything's going to be extinct, and then you'll just have to wait a bit of time. And usually a bit of time in nature is like a couple million years or something. I don't know. Uh, before all this stuff cleans itself up. But yeah, uh, this has been Among Ripples Feature Fridays. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. But until next time, I will see you guys later.